Hello America, this is Call of Duty Goddess. Today is March 29, 2016. I have an article here from a nationbeguiled.com and it's an article titled American Matrix, How We Lost Our Constitution. It's a really good article, in fact so good that I've been wanting to do something on the corporate structure of America and I haven't been able to find just the right thing. Because I honestly don't want to get into the birth certificate thing and the security number thing because that to me is just too involved and there are many other people that have done that. So I'm just going to read some of this. It's, it's a wonderful article. I'll leave the link and I really encourage you to read it. It's amazing. It was written by Marilyn Magruder Barnwall on January 13, 2015. Do you want your constitutional republic back? If so, this article provides you with information that will help you achieve that objective. It won't come through constitutional conventions, conventions of the states, or memorizing the Constitution and going to court with constitutional arguments in a court system, the jurisdiction for which functions under the Uniform Commercial Code and Maritime Law. Your constitutions have been put in hibernation and are brought out like the good silver only when needed to make an impression to be used in self-defense for crimes committed against the people by those in government who are supposed to serve us some questions for you are you aware that the united states is incorporated no this article isn't about the straw man or your name being in capital letters or all legal documents like your birth certificate driver's license social security card passport etc there is the united states of america and there is the united states of america incorporated there is a good reason for what happened and it does not involve the bankruptcy of this nation are you aware that the state in which you live in is incorporated all 50 states are incorporated i'll provide you with absolute evidence not opinion but evidence are you aware that your county is incorporated are you aware that your city or township is incorporated are you aware that most departments within your city and county are incorporated yes i mean the sheriff's department the public department the city and county and state courts even your state supreme court the public library the public works department the department of education and the county clerk almost every department in your city and county is incorporated i must admit this disclosure surprised me more than the others even more interesting most people who staff these departments including county commissioners sheriffs librarians police chiefs and other department heads appear as i was unaware of the corporate status of their departments are you aware that corporations are run under the jurisdiction of statutory law not constitutional law are you aware that articles of incorporation based on the policies and regulations in place and all 50 states are governed by uniform commercial code and or maritime law which are the basis of statutory law in other words when wearing their corporate hats which is whenever it is to their advantage to do so our federal state county and city governments and the departments contained within them must comply with the policies of the uniform commercial code not with the constitution of the united states or your state constitution the courts too are incorporated no wonder we see so little constitutional or common law in our courts no wonder administrative law judges can make the law up as trial proceeds or so it appears to those thinking the jurisdiction under which the courts function is constitutional or common law this information should answer the questions of many americans who wander around shaking their heads trying to figure out why our courts are making the insane unconstitutional decisions they spew out of them like the devil's bad breath the courts are incorporated and comply with the requirements of statutory law based on the policies and procedure dictated by the uniform commercial code or maritime law not the united states constitution or 
your state's constitution. So when you walk into any state, local, federal, or any courtroom or building, and you see this gold fringe around your flag, beware. You are in maritime law territory. Your constitution is no longer valid. People look at their small town police departments being equipped as if they are General Patton in the 1940s powering his way through Germany and wonder why Humvees and SWAT teams are needed to protect them. Who or what are they really protecting? And it goes beyond our police departments and sheriff's offices to our courts and schools and property taxes and everything else. You need to know whether what I'm saying is true or false. Go to Manta.com and look up your own state, county, and city. Especially look at the departments within your city and county. Your fire, sheriff, and police departments, your county clerk, the state and county courts. Why is this information critical if we are to understand why America is in many cases functioning in a way designed to destroy her? Why is it dangerous information? The answer is direct and simple. Corporations, including government corporations, do not function under a constitution. They function under articles of incorporation, which are subject to business laws of the Uniform Commercial Code and Maritime Law, not constitutional law. Even more important, corporations can be dissolved. They can be dissolved. That is the biggest danger of the people becoming aware of this information. The corporate structure they have built to remove our access to constitutional and common law in our courts can, like any other corporation, be dissolved. It is perhaps their Achilles heel, their greatest weakness. We, the people, can dissolve them. The corporations cannot be dissolved by the government employees who work for them. They must be dissolved by the people. How? County by county. These corporations were imposed from the top down, and the only way to dismantle them is from the bottom up. Carry a petition. Get the required number of signatures and get it in your county ballot next election. The initiative should say something like, no government entity in blank county shall incorporate or be incorporated. All government agencies, divisions, and departments must function under the legal jurisdiction of the Constitution of the State of blank and be subject to the limits imposed on government by the Constitution of the United States and the State of blank. I am not a lawyer and I'm sure you can get a stronger statement from an attorney experienced at writing ballot initiatives. And to further kind of cement the ballot initiative things, I'm sure there are pros and cons, and I really haven't looked into it much. But there is an article here, a write-up, by a publication of the American Bar Association, that is the British Accreditation Registry Association. There is a firm that wrote an article about Citizens Initiative, and I'll scroll down to the bottom and see what they say about it. The very last paragraph in here states, The promise of the initiative process to deliver power to the people is less than advertised. Big money and political business as usual drive a process that can result in ill-considered laws with unintended consequences. So is that true? I don't know. But I look at the author and I think to myself, big money? Hmm, you're a member of the Bar Association. What are your concerns? But please comment below. Let me know your thoughts on citizen initiatives. As I will point out, liberty is not free. And if you want your constitutional rights restored, it will require some long-term planning and changes in the way county costs are defined and financed. But it can be done if you would rather our cost of liberty and constitutional rights be paid via budgeting and taxation instead of young men and women being unnecessarily killed 
and maimed in unlawful, unconstitutional wars, you will help dissolve the government corporations that help make such tragedies possible. I must admit, I'm surprised this material has been around as long as it has, and none of the many lawyers who have been exposed to it had a light go off in their heads saying, Corporations do not function under constitutional law, which is why Americans are being so abused by their courts. And corporations can be dissolved. So let's dissolve them. You can logically assume that if your city, township, county, state, and federal governments are incorporated, they do not function under the protection of the Constitution of any kind. They function under the rules and regulations of the Uniform Commercial Code. Do you now understand why your courts and law enforcement officials do not act in accordance with the limits placed on government by the United States Constitution, or even more important, your state's Constitution? In the past month or two, I've watched videos about jurisdictional law given by experts on constitutional law. Both speakers were quick to point out the rights God grants each of us and the limits on government guaranteed under the Constitution. Neither realized that the constitutional rights of the people are being badly abused because of the corporate status of federal, state, county, city governments, and most of the departments that function under those entities and thus do not answer to federal and state constitutions. Neither speaker realized that corporations are under the jurisdiction of statutory or business law, the Uniform Commercial Code, or maritime law. It raises a difficult question for constitutional experts. If the various governments, including our courts, function under the jurisdiction of Uniform Commercial Code rather than the Constitution, how important is a Constitution that has been hijacked? It's time to stop speculating about issues, wondering if this crisis or that one is a false flag. They rely on chaos to keep you off balance because only by keeping you off balance can they take their next unlawful step designed to eliminate the asset singly responsible for preventing socialism or communism in America's capitalist economy, the middle class. They throw one issue after another at you, from amnesty to police brutality, from shopping center shootings to elementary school shootings to shootings of police officers sitting innocently in their car. They take you from one false flag to another. They throw one war after another at you, or threaten a new war. As the manipulation of gold was used to cause the Great Depression of the early 1900s, they used the new gold, oil, to manipulate this even greater depression. They can call it a recession all they want. But the only reason the people are not standing in food lines as they did in the 1930s is food stamps. They called the job creation programs of the Great Depression the Works Progress Administration, or WPA, which I'll refer to the Works Progress Administration from here on out as the WPA. In the 1930s, cities all over the country got new perks and recreation facilities. Bridges were built, as were schools and highways, the work of the WPA. It provided jobs for the unemployed. For this current Greater Depression, it is called shovel-ready jobs. When they hire a new government employee, it depletes the tax base rather than adding to it. So new government hires cannot be categorized as new jobs produced by the economy. But the Obama administration needs to look like it's doing something right. So they create new jobs by funding them via private sector contractor work projects. Then they can be counted as new jobs. Just as Franklin Delano Roosevelt did with the WPA jobs, but government not a thriving free marketplace is paying for these new jobs. Regardless of stock market ups and downs, the marketplace is not thriving. It's being manipulated. 
I believe the core problem centers on the incorporation of every federal, state, and county and all of the departments within each and the resulting system that had to be built to support itself. Logic tells me that if we get rid of the corporations, we remove their ability to manipulate our courts and all government offices with no personal accountability. I believe if we take action while we still can, we can retrieve our nation from what the international central banking system has thrown in the trash bin of history without first ensuring the corpse is dead. And I've done videos on the Article 5 Convention of the States, the Article 5 Counterman, and I, I favor one over the other. But when you look at it in realistic terms, you see that our Constitution is not being used at all. And when you take the Corporation of America into account, that probably would be the problem. So why not just dissolve it? Because it offers a solution to the conundrum they have created. Over a long period of time, and it began in the late 1800s, they created the conundrum to give them sufficient time to globally enslave all but the elitist. The same techniques, if not the same programs, are being used around the world. The objective, global government, composed of oligarchies which is an elite class and a labor class, no middle class, worldwide. Manta.com is a website that provides corporate information. Now normally I use Dun & Bradstreet, but we'll just use Manta.com on here to search for businesses and see what kind of information we can gather from Manta.com. So here we are at mana.com and we're going to start off with the Sheriff's Department and we'll play around with Oregon since I've been doing a lot of videos about Oregon lately. So I'm now in Oregon and I put in Sheriff's Office and here's Multnomah County Sheriff's Office, Portland, Oregon. Let's go to the Sheriff himself, Multnomah County Sheriff. And that's in Portland, Oregon, you see there. Multnomah County Sheriff. It says here, a privately held company in Portland, Oregon. Bob Skipper Manager. I have no idea who that is. Here's another one. Clackamas County Sheriff North. Just look at that. Clackamas County Sheriff North. A privately held company in Clackamas, Oregon. So it's a business. Now, just to check this out, I put in District Court in Harney County, Oregon. Here's the Ninth Circuit Court in Portland, Oregon. It says the Ninth Circuit Court, a privately held company in Portland, Oregon. Donald Cinnamon, branch manager. Let's go back and see what else we can find. U.S. District Court, Portland, Oregon. One hundred Southwest Third Avenue, number seven forty, in Portland, Oregon. There's a map there. Has a website, uscourts.gov. And it says, U.S. District Court, a privately held company in Portland, Oregon. Mary Moran is the manager. Here is the Oregon State Forestry. Same thing, privately held company. Oregon State Court, 807 Main Street, Oregon City, Oregon. Privately held company again. Same thing, Oregon State Bar. And bar, no matter what you are told, means British Accreditation Registry. It's not about furniture. It's not about a bar in a courtroom. Because if it were about a bar in a courtroom, well then the witness that has to testify on the witness stand would be passing the bar as well, wouldn't they? So that doesn't hold water. It doesn't work. 
So you can go to manta.com, M-A-N-T-A.com. Just put that in. Look for yourself, please. I encourage you. So let's get back to the article here. And I've showed in many of my videos, you know, that the FBI is a corporation, that many things are corporations. I went through and showed it to you on Dun and Bradstreet. Now you can see it even more glaringly on Manta.com. We'll just continue here. For many years, people talked about government comprehensive annual financial reports. I'll refer to them from here on out as CAFRs and have tried to find where the CAFR funds are hidden. Where in the world could they be hiding them? The federal, state, county, and city corporations would be a good guess. No one knows about them. Did I mention that each of these entities has two identities? There is, for example, the state of Colorado, and there is the state of Colorado Incorporated. There is a county of Denver, and there is a Denver County Incorporated. They cannot drop the constitutional identity because if they do, they lose we the people who don't volunteer to be part of their corporation. Thus, it appears every government, no matter how large or how small in the country, has dual identities, one incorporated and one unincorporated. When you find your sheriff's department is incorporated, when you find your local courts are incorporated, you might just want to start carrying a petition to get signatures demanding a vote of the people to dissolve all the government corporations within your county and demand they function under your state constitution rather than under the statutory jurisdiction which offers citizens no constitutional protections from government usurpation of the power of individual citizens. It will surprise only a few to learn that it all began with the Federal Reserve System. You can contact any of the 374 veterans organizations listed as companies by the federal government. Now we know why they could withhold medical benefits from our veterans. We know why no one who participated in withholding the medical services from dying men and women entitled to those services was terminated from government payrolls. They were wearing their corporate hats. And here it talks about the Dun and Bradstreet numbers and how you can verify them. And of course I'll leave the link for this article and you can play around with it. But, I mean, you've, if, if you've been watching my videos, you've seen that they're there. And we'll continue. This list creates a lot of interesting questions. For example, why does the U.S. Internal Revenue Service need a DUNS number? Unless it's incorporated. Looking at the list of departments within the U.S. government, does it give you any insight on how they get away with the VA scandal? Fast and Furious Guns Across the Border, Benghazi, the U.S. discrimination against conservative groups applying for tax-exempt status. Relative to law, corporations are governed by the Uniform Commercial Code, or the Law of the Seas, sometimes called Maritime Law. They have no obligation to protect anyone's constitutional rights when functioning under their corporate hats and they keep the constitutional hat available just in case they get caught and need to declare their constitutional rights to certain protections. The Constitution gives them protections from personal liability they would not otherwise have. To understand the damage that has been done to our nation, we need to define the word colorable, its meaning, its impact on our currency, our courts and our constitutional liberties, and the limits the Constitution places on the government. It is from the meaning of the word colorable that the virus of death infecting our nation breeds and keeps breeding like Ebola. It dissolves every major life-giving organ in its path until death ensues. Colorable money, colorable courts. To be colorable is for something to appear to be what it is not. It looks real. You are told by your government that it is real. And in the example of currency, it is used or behaves 
as if it's real, but it's not. Take what you are told is a dollar bill from your billfold. It looks like a dollar bill. You can spend it like a dollar bill, but it's not a dollar bill. It's a Federal Reserve note. It says so right on the face of it, at the top above George Washington's picture. In the world of banking, what is a note? It's a loan. It's a credit. According to the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis, fiat money has no value in and of itself, but it can be exchanged like monopoly money. A direct quote from the Minneapolis Fed, fiat currency can be exchanged for goods and services because the people are confident it will be honored when they buy goods and services. Money and currency are not the same. We used to have money in America, but when the dollar was no longer backed by gold or silver, our money became a fiat currency. These things called a Federal Reserve note became colorable currency. It just serves as a paper currency. Money is something of substance, like gold or silver. For common law to exist, money of substance must exist. So when the colorable currency called Federal Reserve Notes was created, the government had to create a jurisdiction to cover colorable contracts. The incorporated governments called this new form of jurisdiction statutory law. Because though it was based on the Uniform Commercial Code, which is based on Admiralty Law, statutory is neither. Thus, statutory jurisdiction is colorable. It sounds complicated, but if you think about it for a few minutes, it is really quite simple. Public law was used in common law courts. Public policy is used in statutory courts. And that's what gave bureaucrats control of our courtrooms. That's what gave them the ability to prosecute members of the public because a regulation passed by a government agency rather than a law passed by Congress in your state legislature was violated. So our courts have changed. We've been unable to file cases against our government even when clear abuses of power exist. All of this and more has been caused by the change of the common to a colorable form of maritime law called statutory law, a form of law required when our various governments incorporated which in turn was required when the Federal Reserve System presented us with the colorable currency. What have we Americans been taught by our government subsidized education about the cause of our Revolutionary War? Mostly we were told about the Boston Tea Party, the midnight ride of Paul Revere, and other nice stories. It began because of the Rothschilds and their central bank system, which in today's world has driven us to the brink of another world war. It's true that all those things were great irritants, but the real core problem involves central banking, the Bank of England. The colonists were forced by England's king to use a paper currency issued by the Bank of England, which demanded we use it, and we were to cede our colonial banking and monetary systems and pay interest to the Bank of England for using their paper money. It sounds eerily like the way the Federal Reserve System in America works today, doesn't it? It is, in fact, quite similar. So we must start with the assumption that what made our ancestors go to war in the 1700s is quite acceptable to Americans today because we have embraced what they were willing to die to prevent, central banks and a fiat currency. The Rothschilds were around when America was a colony of Great Britain, and the fact that we were founded on the basis of common law troubled them. Why? Common law is based on substance and rejects colorable money and colorable courts. Article 1, Section 8 of our Constitution describes for you what substance relative to common law means. Gold and silver, not a meaningless fiat currency that has nothing backing it. That is a currency with no substance and violates common law. Prior to the forming of the Federal Reserve System, America's Constitutional Republic required the nation to pay its debts in gold or silver and Rothschild's bank did not loan gold or silver. 
Thus, they did not like our newly formed government, which rejected a fiat currency with nothing backing it, what we have today. The Rothschilds allowed the King of England to borrow paper money from them and got repaid in gold and silver. Our Constitution declared gold and silver as the official currency of the United States of America, and that's why the Rothschilds financed the War of 1812. They wanted America as part of the United Kingdom so they could expand into the New World. They, of course, lost the War of 1812 and began seeking other ways to further their we'll loan you paper money and you pay us back in gold and silver scheme and began working on what we now have as a central banking system, the Federal Reserve, founded on December 23, 1913, 100 years after the War of 1812. And how legitimate is the Federal Reserve Act of 1913? Not very. Read the history. Our ancestors in North America began to revolt against the Brits, but we had common law in the colonies at the time. When the king's tax collectors made their rounds, however, they imposed admiralty law on the people. It enabled them to arrest and quickly try people denying to what were mostly Englishmen and women the common rights due to them as citizens of the crown. That is what caused the Revolutionary War. Perhaps the most interesting part of our history is that almost exactly the same thing has happened to us once again. What's the old saying about what happens if we don't learn from history? By incorporating federal, state, and county governments, because of the Federal Reserve's colorable currency, the U.S. government made it possible to remove the common law supported by our U.S. Constitution and implemented a prostituted form of maritime or admiralty law called statutory law. Our ancestors refused to tolerate it, and it will be interesting to see if today's society, which seems more motivated by security and comfort than by right and wrong and liberty, will accept the law of the seas. I think we've lived with the law of the seas long enough. I think it's time for a change. And this article goes on to give you some complicated definitions, the law definitions, and I'm not into all that. I'll leave the link. You can read them yourself. But I'd like to go on and get to the meat of this article. I believe it's very important. And the American court system has been manipulated in such a way for such a period of time that we are under tyrannical rule and don't even know it. And what are the courts going to do? They've got the best of both worlds. The courts don't want to admit that they are operating under admiralty maritime jurisdictions. So they took the international law and adopted it into our codes. That is what the Supreme Court decided in the Erie Railroad case, Erie Railroad versus Tompkins Supreme Court, 1938, that the decisions will be based on commercial law or business law and that it will have criminal penalties associated with it. Since they were instructed not to call it admiralty jurisdiction, they call it statutory jurisdiction. Do you see how the Federal Reserve notes were the basic cause of the problems we now see in our courts, our financial system, our republic, our independence as people? They created a fiat currency backed by nothing. Keep in mind the word note means loan. It is colorable currency. The common law, as embodied in the U.S. Constitution, for the protection and security of persons and property, is substantive law. Substantive right, a right as the life, liberty, and property, or reputation, held to exist for its own sake and to constitute part of the normal legal order of society, the intention of the Founding Fathers being assurance of access to this law by the people. The most important thing people can work to achieve is constitutional counties. This system is imposed on us from the top down, and we must be unwound from the bottom up. Corporations can be dissolved, and we need to do that. 
It's not difficult to achieve. Get enough signatures on a petition and get the initiative in your county ballot and vote the corporations out of existence. It is, however, more difficult than it sounds. It requires extensive planning because you must remember how we got from a constitutional republic to crony capitalism. Here's what I think happened. The Federal Reserve came into being in 1913. Our money was turned into a fiat currency when President Nixon took us off the gold standard. The U.S. government was based on common law, which made colorable money. And that made it impossible for it to continue issuing Federal Reserve notes. So the federal government incorporated itself, which made it possible for them to continue with the issuance of Federal Reserve notes. It became clear that the states could not accept colorable money from an incorporated federal government unless they too were incorporated. And the same thing happened to our counties. To gain access to a colorable currency, an entire system had to be created. How much simpler our lives would be if the Treasury Department had taken over America's monetary system rather than build this octopus so the Federal Reserve System could be maintained. This attests to the power of the Rothschild Central Banking System, and not all of the nations of the Middle East have central banks. Libya didn't have one until Gaddafi was removed from office and killed. Libya now has a central bank. Though it is not difficult to dissolve the corporations, if it is the will of the people to regain their constitutional rights, a great deal of thought must go into how a country that dissolves its corporations will survive without federal and state dollars. Some of the questions that arise are, if common law is returned to our court system and our governing bodies, it requires a currency that has substance and contracts based on that substance. Fiat currency has no substance. How can those people being paid by the federal, state, and county governments get paid in a currency of substance? How about people receiving Social Security and Medicare benefits? How about veterans receiving retirement and VA benefits? They are being paid in Federal Reserve notes, as we all are, which, since they are not redeemable in gold and silver, are deemed as having no substance, and contracts with no substance are rejected by common law. This part of the problem resolution is complex, but with good planning it can be done. Can fiat currency be used at all? in a constitutional country? Is there a way to reject the colorable statutory laws created by federal and state governments and build a bridge between common law and uniform commercial code, admiralty, maritime law, equity law, etc.? Well, if you want my opinion, I don't think it should be mixed and intertwined. Look what we've lived with, with the mix and intertwine. And as for the gold currency, you really shouldn't have a fiat currency because your government can print as much money as they want and pocket it. Look what's going on today. And it comes out off the sweat of our brow. So, in conclusion, liberty is never free. How much you value it will determine the price you are willing to pay to regain it. This is Call of Duty Goddess signing off. And as always, I've got your six.